So today, right now, we're going to talk about the consumables on your MIG welder, how to string this wire up, the roll drive systems, and the end consumables on the torch. So when you're welding, you can probably hear this. Basically a MIG welder, what I do is pull the trigger and the wire comes out. But the other thing that comes out of this nozzle is gas. So a lot of times when you're welding and you have problems with porosity or you have problems with gas feeding, it's usually something pretty simple and it's usually in these end consumables. So I want to show you how these consumables work. What you have first is the nozzle and this nozzle directs the gas. So the gas comes out of these little holes right here. I'm going to pull this thing off so you can see real good. It screws on here. These little holes right here, when I pull the trigger, the gas comes out of these holes and then it directs it down to the nozzle and out the end. Okay? This contact tip, I'm going to pull this apart so you can see all of this. The contact tip screws out and this is where contact, electrical contact, is made to the wire. These are consumables because it's a copper little contact tip and you're running a steel wire through it. Therefore, they wear out. You can see the stuff on the end of it. If you look at that hole in the end of this one, it's a little bit worn out. So what happens is these contact tips get worn out, the hole gets too big, and they don't make good electrical connection to the wire. This little dude, about 25 cents, can cause all kinds of problems. It's not your machines broke, it's not any problem with the power, it's just this little thing and we buy them by bulk. We buy 500 of these at a time. So if you look at it and it looks a little bit oblong, a little bit worn out, change it. Get a new one. Okay? So, we're going to put the contact tip back in. We want to make sure it's tight. Use your whelpers, you don't have to put a breaker bar on it, just tighten it up a little bit, right? This next part that the contact tip screws into is called the gas diffuser. Sometimes they get burned around the end, sometimes they get stripped out. We buy these by bulk too. The insulator is this plastic part that screws on to the end of the gun. And that holds the nozzle. What happens many times when you lose gas coverage is this thing will become loose and it'll work its way out and it covers up the gas holes. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that this is tight and finger tight is fine. And then we put our nozzle on and a nice clean gas flow. Now as you weld, what happens a lot of times is that nozzle gets spatter in the end of it. And you can tell that that spatter is going to break your gas flow. If this thing gets closed off too much, you're not going to get the type of gas flow that you need. So you want to make sure you come in here and keep that spatter cleaned out of this nozzle. Okay, so those are our end consumables. We want to make sure the insulator is tight, the gas holes are not covered up, we got a good contact tip and we slide this dude on right here. Now what we're going to do is show you how to change the wire on the machine. So the first thing we do is we remove the nozzle and the contact tip. We get those right out of the way for now. Okay? Now I'm going to come over here to the machine and you can see when I pull the trigger this drive roll system is what feeds the wire when I pull the trigger. This wire feeds through here all the way through the gun and out the end. So you're going to have to change your wire. So what we're going to do is clip this wire and I want to make sure I hold on to this wire because if I don't this whole spool will to unspool itself. So I'm going to bring this wire through here and just leave it there for a second. Now, I lift up the rollers, I can pull this little plate off in here, it only goes on one way, and this releases tension on the wire, so now I can pull the wire out of the gun. And when you pull this wire out, 
You want to make sure you ravel it up because it is sharp. It can poke you. Just take this wire, fold it up a little bit, wrap it around, and throw it in the trash. Now we're going to spool the wire back through. So for pretend, what we have is a locking ring, right? So the wire has a plug, and the end of that plug is right here. This, this stub has to go into that hole. That's what makes the wire turn. So I put the wire on. I make sure that the hole is lined up. And I want the wire feeding off from the bottom because when it comes off the bottom, it makes a nice smooth transition into the feed system. If I switch the wire around and the wire comes off the top, now it has to bend. This wire is very small and it's very flimsy, so we always want the smoothest, pa smoothest pass, the smoothest pass through everything. Keep this thing straight as you can not binding it up like this. So we come in and put our locking ring on. We hold our wire back here so it doesn't come unraveled and end up on the floor. Now we bring this wire into this guide tube. And if you can see right in this guide tube, we feed it through. Sometimes you got to help it a little bit. We feed it into this one and it goes right into the gun. Okay? We put our plate back on. This holds the wire in place. Now the other thing you want to make very sure of is the roller size. So when we use different diameters of wire, we have to use different roller size. If you notice, these ones say right here, 045, that's the wire we're running. If we're running 035 wire, you have to change the rollers, all four of them. You can ask your instructor where those are. We have bins of them. But these are 045 rollers. We're using 045 wire. We just clip these dudes on here, and we're ready to go. We bring a little bit of pressure down on the wire. We shut the gate, and we pull the trigger and watch what happens. So right now the wire is just feeding through the gun. It's feeding through the gun. It's going to come right out the end here. I have the gas running right now. There's also a switch on the front of this machine to just run the wire so you're not wasting the gas. But for today's video purposes, not a big deal. And there's the end of the wire. When I get done with the end of the wire, I put the contact tip back on. Make sure it's fairly tight. You don't have to kill it. I put the nozzle on, and we're ready to weld. You're going to use these machines. You're going to have to change the wire. The size of the wire and the type of the wire is identified on the label on the wire. Your procedure that your instructor will give you will tell you for which weld what size wire to use. You need to make sure that the rollers are the same size as the wire. You're going to have to change this wire. If there's a problem with the feeding system and you get a bird nest, it's the same process. Pull it off, pull the bar off, feed it through, bring it out the end, and we're ready to weld.